Okay, so this is a video to go over 1-8. I will not be in class with you today, so what I would like you to do is listen to this video, fill in the notes, and then you can work on the homework after you're done. Okay, so the first thing is, let's go over a few different definitions. Um, the first is a horizontal line test. So if you look at the definition, it says that it's the inverse of a relation is a function, if and only if, each horizontal line intersects the graph of the original relation in at most one point. All right, so what does that mean? You look at a graph, you draw a horizontal line. If it passes one time, that means that the inverse is a function. If it passes more than once, then that means the inverse function would not exist. So let me get something straight. We've talked about the vertical line test, and the vertical line test says that the graph I'm looking at is a function. The horizontal line test is something completely different. It is telling me if the inverse of the graph I'm looking at exists. Okay, so to sum up, vertical line test tells me if it's a function or not. Horizontal line test tells me something about the inverse. All right, the next definition is one-to-one. -one. So it says such a function whose inverse is also a function is, and then you can fill in the blank there, one to one. Since every x is paired with a unique y and every y is paired with a unique x. What that is saying is for every x there's one y and for every y there's one x. A graphical approach to you understanding this is if a f function passes the vertical line test and the horizontal line test, we can conclude that a function is one-to-one. -one. All right, so now let's go ahead and talk about the inverse function. So first let's talk about how we would write the notation. So it is, um, so if we read the sentence, it says if f is a one-to-one -one function with domain d and range r, then the inverse function of f is denoted as the following. And it would have the reverse domain of the original function, all right? And so let me further talk about that. Say I have the point a comma b on the original function. Then that means that I have this like x and y value, but I'm going to call it a and b on the original function, and the inverse I would just switch the x and y, so in this case it would be b comma a, and that would be the point on the inverse. So notice that we have switched the x and the y values. All right, so if the domain is talking about the x values and the range is talking about the y values, and I switch them to get the inverse, then I also have to switch the domain and range. Okay, and we'll get to more into that on day two of inverses. For now, if you just know the basic idea, you're good. All right, so what I want you to do in this example one is I want you to go ahead and graph these points. So I want you to take a moment. You can pause the video and go ahead and graph those points. You should get the following. Now I would like to ask you a couple of questions about this black graph. I want to ask you two questions. One, does it pass the vertical line test? And one, does it pass the horizontal line test? You should get that um, to the question, does it pass the vertical line test? If you draw a vertical line through that graph, notice that it will only cross once. So yes, indeed, it does pass. Now, does it pass the horizontal line test? Yes, it only crosses once. If a graph passes both the horizontal and the vertical line test, we can conclude that the function is one-to-one. -one. All right, so if the horizontal line test is passed, then I can actually graph the inverse. So using the table of values that I gave you for f of x, I'd like you to switch the x and y values, and that gives us the inverse. So instead of 0, comma, negative 3, I'll have negative 3, comma, 0. Instead of 1, negative 1, we flip them, I'll get negative 1, 1, etc. And then if you take a moment and plot those, you'll notice that you'll get the red graph to the right. 
a graphical approach to understanding inverses is that they will always be symmetrical across this y equals x line. And you'll see that bullet in blue there that functions and its inverse, a function in its inverse is always symmetrical, symmetrical meaning a mirror image over that diagonal line y equals x. Okay, so if you look at example two, what I want you to do is I want you to go ahead and pause the video and take a moment and plot those points. You should get the following. If I switch the x and y graph, or switch the x and y points, excuse me, then we will get the inverse. So I'll switch all the x and y coordinates. You can take a moment and you can plot those. And you should get the following. Notice that these particular graphs are symmetrical over that y equals x line. I would like to us, for us to investigate those questions again. So the first one is, does the, now we're looking at the black graph, okay? So does the black graph pass the vertical line test? Yes, it does, cool, it's a function. Now, does that black graph pass the horizontal line test? Well, hopefully you can see that that horizontal line there from 0, negative 1, all the way to 1, negative 1, all of those points are on a horizontal line. So if I draw a horizontal line at y equals negative 1, notice that there's going to be many points that pass through that horizontal line test, so it would not pass. And if it does not pass both the vertical and the horizontal, then that means that it is not 1 to 1. I can also conclude that the inverse is not a function, which is really key. If a graph does not pass the horizontal line test, I can automatically conclude that the inverse is not a function. Now, I can graph it, right, like we did in this example. Sure, I can graph it, but it's just not going to be a function. It's going to be a relation of some sort relating, you know, things together, but it's not going to be a function. Okay. So let's move on to the next page. The next page is talking about how we could verify inverses. So what I would like you to do as a warm up to review what we did last class is I would like you to do, I would like you to use the functions f and g in example three, pause the video, and you can do f of g of x in part a, and then I want you to do g of f of x in part b and see what you get. For both of those examples, you should have gotten x for both. And that really says a lot. So what that means is that for a function, if a function's one to one, let's call the function f, and then let's call the one to one, or let's call the inverse function g, excuse me. So let me repeat that. I have a function f that's one to one, and then I have an inverse function that's g. The following thing happens f of g of x equals x, and g of f of x equals x. If I do both of those compositions, f of g and g of f, I have to do both, and they both equal x, then I can conclude that they are inverses. So this is used to verify inverses. So say you're given two equations, and they say, are these two functions inverses? you would use this definition where you would find f of g, then you would find g of f. If you get x, they're both inverses. If you get something different, they're not inverses. So for the next example, I'm actually going to walk you through this one. So the question says, let f of x be x minus 2 over 5. Let g of x be f x over 5 over x, excuse me, plus 2. Are f of x and g of x inverses? So we want to use that definition. Let's find f of g, let's find g of f. All right, so I'm going to start with f of g of x. Let's take out the g of x, let's plug in what g of x actually equals, which is 5 over x plus 2. 
All right, so that's my starting point. So now I'm going to take that 5 over x plus 2, and I'm going to plug it in to the x and f. So notice, remember, I like to use those parentheses. And then the open parentheses, I would put in the 5 over x plus 2. All right, so if I simplify that, notice what I get. The 2's cancel, right? Plus 2 minus 2, that goes to 0. On the top of the fraction, I'm left with 5 over x. On the bottom of the fraction, I'm left with 5. And then when I have a fraction with a fraction, we talked about this last class, we can multiply by the reciprocal. So I'll have 5 over x times the reciprocal of 5, which is 1 over 5. Notice the 5's cancel, and I get 1 over x. Immediately, if I do not get x, they're not inverses. I don't even have to do g of f. That's like awesome. Like if one of them fails, cool. I can automatically assume that they're not inverses. I don't have to do any more work, which is awesome. All right, so these aren't inverses, so that'll be a couple of your questions in your homework. And then the last thing that I want to go over is how to algebraically find inverses. Okay, so I'm just going to do example 5. Example 6 and 7 we're going to do um, next week when I'm back. All right, so here we go. Here's how we find if two things are inverses of each other. The first thing you should do is replace f of x with y. So we want to have y equals 1 over x minus 4. On the first page, we talked about if we're given a table of values of x and y, how do I get the inverse? Well, I switch the x and y coordinates, and then I plot that, and that's my inverse. Well, similarly, when I'm doing it algebraically, I'm going to switch the x and y's in the equation, and that'll be my first step. So I'll have x equals 1 over y minus 4. Now I'm just going to solve this for y. Okay, so I've switched the x and y's, but now I need to solve for my like new y in its current position. So the first thing that I'll do is multiply both sides by y minus 4. All right, so on the left side, I'll get x minus x times y minus 4. And on the right side, the y minus 4's will cancel, and I'll get 1. Again, I'm trying to solve for y, so let's divide each side by x. I get y minus 4 equals 1 over x. Then to get y by itself, I would just add 4 to both sides, so 1 over x plus 4. And then the last thing that I want you to do is I want you to use the proper notation for inverse. So let's replace y with the notation for f inverse, which is f to the negative 1 of x. So then my inverse function is 1 over x plus 4. And that's how you find the inverse algebraically. So to sum up, we've talked about um, horizontal line test 1 to 1. Horizontal line test tells me if the inverse ex function exists. 1 to 1, if it passes both vertical and horizontal line tests, yay, it's 1 to 1. Then we talked about inverse. We talked about if we're looking at a table, we can switch the x and y values to plot the graph. We then talked about how to verify if two things are inverses. We would do f of g, g of f, make sure both of those things are equal to x. If they are both x, we conclude that they are inverses. If one of them fails, they're not inverses. And then example five, we have discussed how to find the inverse algebraically. All right, so we'll do the rest of these notes when I come back next class. And now you can go ahead and work on the homework in class. And thank you so much for being understanding. Um, I've had really severe back pain over the last um, week and um, it really got worse today. So I, um, I really need to be at home and I need to, to rest. So thank you so much for your understanding and I'll see you next week.